To start your application to SLCC, visit slcc.edu forward slash apply. So this website will ask you to enter your first and last name and to give contact information um, in the form of an email address. We strongly encourage you to provide an email address that you check regularly, that you check often, so that you can catch any essential information from SLCC. Once you've entered the information and once you've created and confirmed your password, you'll want to click on the, the blue field that's labeled Apply Now. At this stage, you're ready to proceed by clicking Apply Now, but before you do, you must record your password somewhere where you can access it whenever you need it. Recording your password is important because your password is your password. No one at SLCC will record it. No one at SLCC will have access to it if you lose it. Keep your password safe. Once you've recorded your password, click on the field labeled Apply Now. This will connect your first and last name with your password in SLCC systems. And it means you can log in to actually begin your application uh, whenever you're ready and whenever you have time to proceed. To access your application after you've begun it, open up a web browser and go back to slcc.edu forward slash apply. This will take you to the main application page for SLCC. It should look very familiar. You'll scroll down towards the bottom and click on the field labeled back to login. This will prompt you to enter the email and password that you, you associated with your profile when you began your application. So once you've entered those two pieces of data, click on login, and this will take you to your actual application, the actual application page. So SLCC system will grab your first, last name, and email from your initial request. The next piece of information it will prompt you for is a phone number that, that, we, that SLCC can reach you at. You'll have the option of choosing whether or not you are willing to receive text messages. Um, we recommend that you click yes, but you're free to choose. Next, the system will ask about your citizenship status. Non-U.S. citizens are welcome to study at SLCC. The next piece of information you'll be prompted to provide is your physical address. This is so that the college can send you mail uh, containing information related to your enrollment status, related to financial aid, and related to your grades. Um, after you provide your mailing address, you'll be prompted to provide demographic information. Your birth date, in particular, is a critical piece of information for reestablishing control over your account if you lose your password or if you lose access to the system in any other way. The last piece of information you'll be asked for is your social security number. It isn't necessary to provide it uh, or to have one, but it is extremely helpful if you want help from the college in recovering your account. Once you enter all of this information, click Save and Continue to finish this, sec this part of the application. So in this section, in this next section, um, SLCC system will ask you to describe your current educational history, your current educational status. So you have a couple of options here. You are a concurrent enrollment student, which means you're either attending a public high school, public or private high school, or you are being homeschooled. Okay, we're gonna pick currently attending high school. We're gonna look through the list of states. If you click on U, it'll drop you right down to Utah. And, and this is going to generate a list of all of the public high schools, well, the public, private, and charter high schools in Utah. Um, so you just, you know, sort of scrolling through this list, you get a sense of how many there are. I'm picking Copper Hills just because it's the school that comes to mind. It's the school here that's close by. Um, the next information we're going to enter will be your month of graduation and your year of graduation. After that, we're going to scroll down. It's going to ask you some questions about your past relationship with other colleges that are not SLCC. So you might be attending concurrent enrollment courses through another college. Here is where you would tell us that. Um, I'm going to click no for all of these just as a default. Um, again, you might, you might click yes for this option if you are currently enrolled in another concurrent en enrollment program. Um, but, but we're just going to click no uh, because most of our students click no. 
here's where we're going to get you. This is where we find out if you've applied before. If you've applied before, your application is still current. Um, so only proceed to this point if you've never applied before. Once you've entered all of the relevant information in these fields, you'll need to click on the, the field labeled Save and Continue to finish. All right, this last section has one question, and it's about your student type. And here's where you need to listen closely to what your instructor and your counselor says. You, in this case, you're, you're applying as a concurrent enrollment student. And so when you click that, you need to look at this information. You need to make sure this matches who you are and what you are. And you need to get a piece of information called the state student ID from your high school counselor. And this is uh, that, that seven-digit number that begins with a one or a two. Um, once you have that, you're going to enter it in this field, and you're going to click Save and Continue. If you've entered your SSID properly, you'll see Concurrent Enrollment listed under these options. If you don't see it, you haven't properly entered your SSID and you need to go get help from your instructor or from your, your CE coordinator. Being able to enroll as a concurrent enrollment student here means the difference between being charged the full freight for tuition and being able to register for the correct set of classes offered at your high school. Yeah, I don't have an SSID, so I'm going to pick traditional general application just so that I can show you what the other screens look like. But it's so important that you be able to, to apply as a concurrent enrollment student that, that the application system, if you, if you aren't set up to do that, the application system will actually warn you here at this point and give you a phone number to call our office so that you can get that squared away. Please make sure that you pick the right student type at this screen. Your screen should not say traditional or general application. Once you've selected the, the right student type, you can go ahead and click Save and Continue. And the next screen is going to ask you information about your demography. All of this information is voluntary. All right, the next section is going to be a section that determines your residency in Utah. Uh, you're going to want to go ahead and answer these questions as best you can. Um, this, is, this is how uh, the college determines your residency for the purposes of tuition and other things. Um, it's also a way that the college counts the number of Utah students who enroll in these, in these programs. Um, and the way that they track that is by, by things like where you filed taxes or whether you filed taxes, where your, your car is registered, uh, and, and um, where you've lived for the last 12 months. All right, after you filed your demography and, and your residency um, information, the, the system is going to ask you some information about your academicals uh, related to an area of study. So it's going to ask you to pick one of these areas of study. Um, I'm going to pick art, communication, and digital media as, as a default. It's going to ask you your academicals, so why are you taking classes? Um, and it's going to ask you to, to pick a program of study. So, so this is a way the college has of grouping courses together. Uh, and then it's going to ask you when you plan on starting. So, so none of this is binding. Uh, none of this is contractual. It's just a way the college has of anticipating enrollment and gauging student interests. Um, once you pick that, you can go ahead and click Save and Continue. Um, it's going to take you to, to a page that, that is the student agreement. So if you read all of this and agree with it and, 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 and can, can sort of affirm that you're not lying to SLCC in any way, you'll want to click that box and click Save and Continue. And then this is going to take you to a page that's going to that's going to that lets us know that there's no application fee this year. So good news, you just saved forty dollars. You want to click save and continue. And this will take us to the the last page, which is the most exciting page, uh, which is a page where you will submit your application. So once you've got everything squared away, go ahead and click submit. And congratulations, you are on your way to becoming a, a student at Salt Lake Community College.